Hello everyone, this is John from Coins, RPGs, and more. And in today's episode, I'm going to take a slight divergence from my intended path. One of the, the benefits of being a one-man show is I can do that without really upsetting any schedules because <laughs> I'm the only one who makes them. Anyway, so I, I was planning on doing a lot more with the Cypher system, and I still do. But for the moment, I'm going to put that aside. Because something crossed my uh, desk today that I thought was really cool and I wanted to share with everyone. Some time ago, several years ago, I was a, a player in a game group that played a very interesting system. And this system was the Eldritch role-playing game. And it is written by Dan Cross and Randall Petrus, I believe I pronounced that correctly, uh, published by Crossroad Games. And uh, it's really an interesting system. Now, I played this several years ago, so it's it's been a while since I've played this. But the reason why I'm bringing it up now is because a second edition of this game is currently up on Kickstarter. And I think that's pretty cool. I uh, th this is this is a game that has a, a really unique set of rules, as far as I'm concerned. And it kind of straddles that point between light crunch and medium crunch that I kind of enjoy. It gives lots of options for character customization, or you can run it with a very rigid race class structure similar to D&D. Uh, but we're not going to talk about the, the first edition revised book that I just showed you. We're going to talk about what's coming up with the second edition. And to help that uh, happen, I have downloaded the uh, second edition preview PDF that you can get off of drive through uh, as part of the, uh, I believe that it is included in the drive through purchase of the first edition revised. At least that's how, that's where I found my copy anyway. Um, but if I can find it, I will post links below to where you can, where you can find the same thing that I'm, I'm looking at today. Now, the revised edition of Eldritch, or sorry, the, the second edition of Eldritch is making a, a couple of small changes to how things are run, but for the most part, it's still the same system. And so I'm still fairly confident in saying that, uh, you know, the, the magic is still there, they've refined a few things, and I'm still learning about the changes that were made going through my, my packets as I uh, have printed them out and started to digest them. But that's enough about that idea. So let's get into what is the system? What um, what makes it work? So the Eldritch role-playing system is a combination of a die pool with a step die or die step system. And what that means is it utilizes all the dice the D4, the D6, the D8, the D10, and the D12. And each of them is organized by steps. So uh, there are three primary ability scores in this system. There is competence, prowess, and fortitude. Uh, competence is referencing to anything that deals with the mind. Uh, your you know, like your willpower stuff like that all comes from competence. Actually, I'm sorry, maybe I could be wrong on that one. Um, fortitude, I think, is actually willpower is through fortitude, not competence. I apologize. Competence covers adroitness, expertise, and perception. Uh, those are three things that uh, competence does cover. Uh, and so you want to use competence when you are trying to 
create a very like a bard or a rogue uh, a a mage type character would probably use a lot of competence in order to uh, power their abilities or, or, or in order to you know support their abilities it also is what uh, powers you or what helps you uh, decide how many spirit points your character has and the spirit points are used to activate magical abilities they're used to activate magic items and they're used to enhance or help recover uh, numbers from your defense pools which we'll talk about in a little bit from there there's uh, so that's one and then there's prowess prowess is about your character's uh, skill in doing things whether that is uh, combat or uh, feats of strength, feats of sorry, not well, not feats of strength, but, but feats feats of agility. So uh, prowess kind of diverges into agility, melee, and precision. So if you are intending on playing a melee fighter, you want to make sure that you've got lots of prowess. If you want to be a an acrobat, prowess is what you're looking at. If you want to be a ranger or a ranged fighter, then prowess is what you're looking at. And then finally, we have fortitude. Fortitude is your that's your your body's basic toughness. It uh, dovetails into endurance, strength, and willpower. So each of those three ability scores is defined by the die type. They all start at a D4, and then you can purchase each additional die step up using character points during character creation. So you can end up with, uh, I'm looking at a sample character sheet, by the way, so you guys can kind of see what I'm looking at. Uh, this allows you to have, you could have a competence of a D4 because your character is more of a fighter than anything else. This character is designed to be a, a fighter, it looks like. And uh, their prowess is a D8, which means that they start with their D8 in any roles that, re that involve prowess. And then their fortitude is a D6. Okay. And then from there, you go to the specialties. And the specialties are for competence, it's the adroitness, the expertise, and the perception. For prowess, it's agility, melee, and precision. And for fortitude, you have endurance, strength, and willpower. And then those are also governed by a die type. So you purchase uh, you purchase the die type during character creation that you wish to use with this ability. And this sample character has purchased agility, melee, and perception. All three of them have been purchased to the D6 level with their character points. And then for uh, fortitude, they increase their willpower to D6. From there, there are focuses. And a focus, instead of being a die type, a focus is a numerical bonus that is granted to the total that you roll when testing a, testing a certain ability or trying to do something. Uh, in this character, they spent the points to, uh, for prowess, they spent on the speed focus, the reaction focus, and the threat focus. And those, so anytime you need to test your character's speed, you will get to uh, roll your prowess die, your agility die, and then add your speed bonus to the total. So that would be uh, the d8 from prowess, the d6 from agility, and then a plus one to the total from speed. And that is how... Uh, the ability, the basic abilities, and then the specialty, and then the focus work together to give you your final number in whatever you're trying to do. Uh, combat works the same way. You want to start with your prowess die, and then your melee combat die, or your uh, your precision die, and then you add your threat bonus. Okay.
or in yeah or your ranged threat bonus if your character is a ranged character and then you roll that now combat is where things get a little interesting because in combat what you do is every number that you roll there's you're not trying to beat a number in eldritch that's that's the one of the biggest differences you there's no target number in combat to roll to beat it it's a completely different system when you roll your prowess plus your melee plus your threat let's say i rolled a a six for prowess a three for melee and I add one for threat so that's a total of 10. well my opponent then has taken 10 threat points and they have to buy those off with their defense pools and you start out with uh they will start out with their physical uh, sorry their uh active defense pools And what that what an active defense pool is is it is the sum of your the maximum value of your prowess die plus your ag agility die plus your melee die. So if you have a prowess of eight, an agility of six, and a melee of six, then you get eight plus twelve, twenty. And that means that you can absorb up to 20 points of threat in your physical excuse me in your active defense pool and what that represents is your character dodging parrying moving around the battlefield uh, and avoiding blows once that pool is exhausted then uh, you can roll your character's armor and then add the bonus of the shield to try to absorb additional points. And anything beyond that, beyond that roll, is uh, handled as your passive defense pool. Your passive defense pool is basically like what we would uh, consider hit points. And that is calculated by adding the fortitude die, the endurance die, and the strength modifier all together. So a strength die. So in this case, for this character that we're looking at, it would be a 6 plus a 4 plus a 4. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They have 14 in their passive. So let's say they took they were fighting against a really powerful creature. And this really powerful creature in, in two rounds reduced them to uh, zero in their active defense and so the next round they get hit for another uh let's say another uh nine points of threat well they they roll their armor a d a d6 for their basic armor plus a one for the shield and that gives them a total of seven. So seven out of that nine is absorbed by the armor. The remaining two points is subtracted from the passive defense pool. If the passive defense pool is reduced to zero, the character is considered unconscious or slain. In my experience in playing this game, those pools get depleted quickly because every creature is throwing out a lot of dice. They're, they're, they're tossing around a lot of dice. And uh, I, I played a very tough dwarven fighter who uh, decided to try to be the, the shield for his party. He went ahead and he blocked a mountain pass. And he went from being the toughest character on the field to almost being dead in less than two rounds. 
while the rest of the party tried to figure out how they could actually attack these things. Um, and that surprised me. I, it was surprisingly deadly. I was not expecting that. I thought I had a lot more oomph behind my character than that. So don't let all these numbers fool you into thinking that things are your character is going to be super powerful. They won't. Your character is going to be competent. Your character is going to be able to do things. But there's no superheroes in this system. That's one thing I learned very quickly. And I kind of like it. I, I really do. The only the other stipulation, though, is once you have gotten out of combat, once you've had a chance to rest, in, in D&D terms, you've taken a short rest, um, even probably even less than what D&D would consider a short rest. Basically, Eldritch says within about five minutes or so of catching your breath, your active defense pool recharges. It's kind of like, your, basically, you can think of that as your stamina. Your stamina has recharged, and now you can go out and fight again. Now, your, your physical or your passive defense pools, they have not recharged. They will stay at that wounded state, and you will have to find some way to get rest, true rest, like overnight's rest and healing, in order to bring those pools back up. But it does give your character that extra bit of staying power during a multi-room dungeon. So you're not going to get beaten down in one dungeon and then not in then in one room and not be able to proceed to the next, uh, assuming you have some ability to heal your passive defense pools. And that's part of where the the spirit uh, these spirit points come in because I believe you can use the spirit points to help to recharge some of those pools either during combat or during the rests outside of combat. Magic is a whole nother beast. And I'm going to, I'll admit, I never actually played a magic user in Eldritch before, so I'm going to have to read up on that section before I talk about it in greater detail. But, uh, before, but since we're not there yet, we're not going to talk any more about magic. Let's talk briefly about character creation. Now, at some point, uh, I plan on doing a video on character creation once I've, I've made a couple of sample characters myself. And I want to kind of show how that's done. But one thing I do like is that uh, the this is a point-based character creation system. But it also has templates that you can use to have predetermined races or ethnicities and backgrounds for your characters as well as predetermined classes so if you if you are the kind of player or game master who really just doesn't want to worry about trying to create something and you want to use excuse me predetermined options, then this this RPG has you covered. And the other thing that does is those predetermined packages are offered at a discount of points. So each package costs 20 points, but you get one or two points free worth of items for your, your character's abilities. If you wanted... Uh, so I would actually recommend, personally, if I was to run this, I would run it without the predetermined races and classes. And I would just let people buy the abilities and the uh, advantages that they wanted. And, use, and the disadvantages as well. Because its system does use advantages and disadvantages similar to what GURPS offers. That, you, that you give you more character points to spend in the case of disadvantages or cost character points in the case of advantages, but gives you some small numeric bonus. Um, I think that those are, I guess they're not, they're not called disadvantages. I apologize. They're called flaws. Disadvantage is something else in the game system. That's for the game master. But anyway, you can buy those things to create a very customized character. And I really like that. I, 
but I also like the fact that we have these templates to look at because as a DM, you could use the templates as a guideline in order to create your own fantasy races or your own uh, cultures and offer those up as your own templates for your own game. Uh, they serve as a great template for that. None of them are too complicated. Let's look at the classic uh, the classic dwarf, for example. Aside from the description, the actual template information is the fortitude must be a D8. So you're going to have to spend points, your character points, to get your fortitude up to D8. Your endurance must be a D4. Your prowess must be a D6. And your melee must be a D6. You gain the advantages of night vision and strong will. So that's it. And, and those things, you can easily write those down on the character sheet and move on. It, you could easily uh, modify this if you said, you know what, I want to play a dwarf, but my dwarf or my dwarven races, the dwarven people in my setting don't live under mountains. Uh, they live in, you know, sky cities. So they live on the top of the mountains with these big airships that kind of uh, fly from place to place. Okay. So instead of the night vision, you could give them a different ability to, re to represent that. And uh, then you, you've instantly made your own template, and that's fine. That's wonderful. And that's, that's one of the strengths of the character creation in, in this system is it is pretty versatile without being so comprehensive and so in-depth that you can get lost in it. And that's the one criticism I have of other systems that also use a similar, you know, buying advantages and buying flaws kind of scenario. Anyway, so um, that is a basic overview of the Eldritch system. It is up on the second edition is up on Kickstarter right now. I will post a link to that below. And I intend to do a little bit more with this stuff as time goes on because I want to support this uh, creator. I want to support Dan Cross as he is uh, going to try to create a second edition of this game because I think it's a great game and I, I really enjoyed playing it a few years ago. And I've followed the progress of the system as he's been working on things over the past couple of years. And uh, I really have a lot of high hopes. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very excited, really. I know it may not sound like it. Be, I'm trying to be uh, reserved and professional, but frankly, inside I'm, I'm, a, I'm a giddy little schoolboy. I'm so excited! Yay! Yay! It's awesome! Uh, anyway, thank you. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Please, uh, if you enjoyed this content, leave me a like. Maybe subscribe to the channel. Uh, a comment would be great if you could let me know what you like. Maybe what could use some improvement. Uh, and is there anything else that you want me to talk about? Is there something that you would like me to look at? I would certainly be willing to take some suggestions. Or I could, if I've mentioned something that you want me to talk about more, I could expand on it. I do, do intend to do a, a follow-up video about uh, the magic system once I have uh, learned about it. And then I'll also do, also do a uh, character creation video like I've done with other systems. And eventually I want to do, I want to break out my miniatures and do a sample combat just to show people how that works. Because that tends to be what people reach towards a lot when it comes to deciding what system they really want to, to follow. Anyway, I don't know when those things are all going to come out because I have a, that a trip coming up and I know I'm going to be busy. So I will get those out as soon as I can. But otherwise, best of luck to everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for stopping by and peace be with you.